Hi, I'm Michael McCullough. And what do you think was the most interesting and unique guitar made by Gibson in 1964? The Super 400? The Birdland? The Barney Kessel? Johnny Smith? It certainly wasn't one of the 300 series guitars and definitely not the SG. As far as I'm concerned, the most interesting and unique guitar made by Gibson in 1964 was the Howard Roberts model. Howard Roberts was an American jazz musician, educator, and session musician and was one of the most prolific guitarists of the 1950s and 60s. We'll talk more about the man at the end of this video. This guitar is the 1964 Howard Roberts Standard in natural finish. The guitar came in natural finish and sunburst. There is also a custom version of this guitar with fancier appointments that comes in a solid color or it comes in sunburst. Then there's a third version of the guitar, which is an acoustic version. It's the same as the standard, except it doesn't have the pickup and the volume and tone. It's a completely acoustic version. Let's take a look at the specs of the guitar from the bottom to the top. It has an L4 tailpiece in nickel. So it's the same tailpiece on the L4 guitars. It has a carved arched spruce top with a rosewood bridge that's adjustable. It has one volume and one tone control. It has a white, black, white Epiphone pick guard with the Epiphone logo. What's most unique about this guitar is the oval sound hole that has a white binding. This is reminiscent of the 1920s L4 guitars. And in fact, Howard Roberts played a 1924 L4 in the 1950s, and that's why he wanted this type of sound hole in his artist model. Above the sound hole is a Johnny Smith pickup which is a mini humbucker that's mounted at the base of the neck. The combination of the sound coming from the sound hole and the sound from the strings on the pickup gives this guitar a unique sound, and it's the sound that Howard Roberts wanted for this guitar. Let's talk about the neck. The neck is a mahogany neck, one piece, that meets the body at the 15th fret. It has a rosewood fingerboard that's bound, it has rectangle perloid inlays. On the 17th and 19th fret, they're solid. The rest of the inlays are a slotted rectangle on the 15th, 12th, 9th, 7th, 5th, and 3rd frets. The headstock is the typical elongated Epiphone headstock with a pearl inlaid Epiphone logo and Epiphone crest. Let's talk about the back of the guitar. The back and rims are a maple laminate finished in walnut. It has one ply white binding on the back. It has this one piece mahogany neck and the tuners are waffle back tuners in nickel. In 1966, sometimes late 66 into 67, they start using Grover tuners on this guitar. I have a 69 version of the guitar here that is almost identical in size and appointments except for the metal and the tuners. So let's talk about the metal. The metal on the tailpiece and on the pickup go from nickel to chrome, which is standard on Gibsons in the late 60s. Also, we have on the 69 version of the guitar witch hat knobs in black. The Epiphone logo is slightly different, but it's the same white, black, white Epiphone pick guard. The other thing that changes in the late 60s, in 67, 68, is that the waffle back tuners go to Grover tuners, but the Grovers are not chrome, they're done in nickel. As far as the sound of the guitar is concerned, it has unique sound in the Gibson line. Howard Roberts, again, wanted the sound coming out of the sound hole and the pickup to pick up the um, sound of the strings the way any other archtop guitar would. Let's see what it sounds like. It has a very unique sound to it because of the sound hole and the pickup placement. It's got a deep tone, but also has a really rich and sweet sound to it, 
which is exactly what Roberts wanted for his songs. If you don't know who Howard Roberts is, you're really missing out. He's one of the most important guitarists of the 20th century. In the 1950s, Roberts moved to Los Angeles and became a popular club performer and session musician. Roberts was a prolific artist and recorded over 20 of his own jazz albums. In particular, his 1959 album, Good Pickens, is a classic and defined the sound of popular music in the 1960s. Roberts also appeared on over 2,000 recordings. In the 1960s, he worked in Hollywood on dozens of theme songs for television and film. His guitar sounds can be heard on the theme songs for The Twilight Zone, I Love Lucy, The Brady Bunch, Gilligan's Island, Get Smart, Batman, I Dream of Jeannie, and many more. He also recorded records with other artists such as Georgie Auld, Peggy Lee, Eddie Cochran, Joni Reynolds, Roy Clark, Chet Atkins, Elvis Presley, The Beach Boys, and many others. In the 1970s, Roberts tried to devote his time to jazz and lectured at seminars and in colleges and contributed to a monthly tutorial column for Guitar Player Magazine. In 1976, he co-founded the Guitar Institute of Technology, which later became the Musicians Institute that's still operating in Los Angeles today. These guitars are also super rare. There were very few made. Let's go through the production numbers. Between 1964 and 1970, only 278 standards were made. They're more rare in the natural. Most of them are sunburst. The custom version of the guitar is even more rare. Between 1965 and 1969, only 46 guitars were made. Even more rare is the acoustic version. As I mentioned earlier, there's an acoustic version without the pickup. Only 27 of those guitars were made between 1964 and 1970. It's a super rare guitar. Very few of them come up on the market, but if you can find one, it's a great guitar to play. It's a great sounding guitar. And as I said earlier, it's one of the most unique guitars that Gibson ever made. Thanks for listening.